Good morning and welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. Let's talk about the environment because the environment is super important. Actually, the environment has no importance to the progressive globalist left at all. And that's, you know, I've made this point before. It's one of those things that I like to talk about. But as things start opening up, the rebel states, Texas, Mississippi, some others have have decided that they're going to open up at full capacity and have no mandatory mask wearing. So there's a there's a problem with this and the problem is that we've gone too far. Okay. If we were dealing with a situation approximately one year ago, literally um, this is a time bound video. So literally if we were talking about March of 2020 and you said hey here's the deal right masks may help um hand washing is a big deal social distancing is a big deal we're not going to close anything down people need to act responsibly but we're going to all get through this you would probably actually have a different response to this to what's going on right now than you do now what's happening now is that you have a bunch of people who are very frustrated, very frustrated, who have been putting up with mask mandates for a year, lockdowns for a year, and the masks have become sort of a symbol of, uh, that's not going to help, is it? The masks have become sort of a symbol of totalitarian excess. So when a place like Texas gets rid of a mask mandate, you're going to have more people ignore all of the uh, responses, social distancing, mask wearing when you, when you might be sick, whatever. More people are going to ignore that um, and pay less attention than if you treated people like adults in the first place. It's a really hard one to, 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 to kind of suss out here, but we've, we've had so much authoritarianism that the backlash, the response is going to be somewhat irresponsible. I don't think it's going to actually matter because I think what actually matters is people getting outside, being healthy, getting the vitamin D, that sun glare on my face. As much as it's annoying for the video and as much as it sucks to drive with, is really good for my body and my health and my steroid hormone production and that makes me kind of immune to the syndrome the covid syndrome people are still can't figure out the difference between covid syndrome and the SARS-CoV-2 virus well what the fuck ever right so the environment is completely non, non-issue, not a topic. Now, global warming is something they sound the drum about all the time. Global warming, and the whole point to global warming, extremism or alarmism, is that it's based around these these couple three things. All right, one is having having some sort of emergency that you can drum up to make people feel scared and to give people an enemy, okay? Remember that the whole global warming thing is dependent on deniers, bad people, Republicans polluting, bad behavior, energy companies, industry. It, the whole thing is about negatives. It's about having an enemy. It's also about having control. The whole thing about this is it's a means of increasing multinational, transnational, authoritarian control. Everything about this. Now, with the Trump administration, you had some real improvements in our ability to work on environmentalism. First, we actually kept lowering our emissions as a function of percentage while we had economic growth. First clue is that we were actually doing better than any of the international agreements, but it was considered bad. Why was it considered bad? Because we pulled out of 
costly and useless international agreements. This is a key factor. This is absolutely probably the one key factor that you have to look at above all other things. Now, let me get some shade here for a minute. Uh, it's only going to be for a minute, but here we go. None of the actual effects matter. Only whether or not we are in the Paris Accord actually matters. Doesn't matter whether you're doing good or not doing good with the actual reduction of greenhouse gases or emissions or whatever. Not important. Only the multinational, transnational, authoritarian power is important. Number two, um, well, I guess number three, I went through the enemy thing, you know, demonization, globalization. <clears throat> but the third thing is, it's about, there's a message here that you have to have less, you have to be willing to accept less. Once you give that control and that authority over to the anti-human masters of the world, the globalists, then you have to be willing to accept them giving you less, reducing your quality of life, as if it's a benefit. That, and there you go. That's your global warming activism in a nutshell. Has nothing to do with pollution at all. Nothing they talk about is pollution. Look at the response to the pandemic. The response to the pandemic is environmentalism is completely out the window. Gloves, the hand sanitizer, the long-term effects from the hand sanitizer is going to be insane. Um, <clears throat> masks everywhere. There's masks everywhere. There's more masks littering everywhere than anything I've ever seen in my life. There are fucking masks everywhere. It's disgusting. Um, there you go. In a nutshell, uh, you know, this is going to be a pretty quick video, but environmentalism does not matter to them at all. I'm going to be glad... I'm going to be glad someday when we non-progressives get to own environmentalism again, okay? And I think the way that's going to work is that we're going to, to we're going to talk about the environment as a dynamic structure or dynamic process and think that the the global warming authoritarians are trying to work against nature because they are you know I really hate the, the pollution I'm very sensitive to it and I hate it and it really pisses me off that it's the last thing it is of no concern to the global warming alarmists it's of no concern to the progressives it's, it's completely meaningless to them all they care about is authoritarianism and transfer of power and trying to make people have less so that they can have more. It's a very much a zero-sum game situation for them. And uh, I think that's one of the things in our revolution game, in our game of freedom versus slavery, is that freedom is not a zero-sum game. But slavery and control is always perceived as a zero-sum game. And when, when zero-sum isn't reality, you can't win playing that game. This is going to be so much fun! Stay sideways. Have a great day.